before we start this video and sampling with the canister, uh, one major um, part that we really want to emphasize on is that the equipment that you're getting is worth several hundreds of dollars. And we usually send you three to five pieces. With every piece of equipment that we send you, the canister, the regulators, and the quick grabs, uh, they need to come back to the laboratory. Please do not hold on to this equipment, uh, especially these uh, quick grabs and the gauges. They're several hundred dollars. And if they don't are not returned to us, you are subject to be invoiced for them. Okay, so let's get started on uh, taking a sample with a canister. Okay, so now that you've determined where you're going to sample from and the ports that you're going to use, and once again, please make sure that your sampling port is in the upright position, there are a couple of things you really need to remember before you start sampling. With the equipment that we're going to be sending you, we really want you to get yourself down to either a male or female quarter inch ending so our your, our equipment will retrofit to yours. Now when you receive your kit, what you will get inside your box will be a canister, a quick grab regulator, and a gauge to measure your vacuums. Now it's very important to understand that once you get this equipment, it's a one shot and you're done. Do not play with the equipment prior to taking your sampling. If you'll notice on the canister, there'll be an orange tip. This is a protective cap. When we take this protective cap off, there is a set of crosshairs. If the crosshairs are pushed in and disengaged before you start to take your sampling, you're going to bias results. The biggest thing that we always need to look for when we do your sampling are your fixed gases. If your O2 levels are too high, from your uh, sampling port, we've now determined that you have taken the sample incorrectly. And most problems are is that when people turn around and get the cans, they will push these in or hook up the equipment prior to, to hooking it up to their ports. The other thing that you'll get is a gauge. And the gauge will read vacuum and in most cases will read positive pressure. When you're pulling your sample, you have to remember, please make sure the port you're taking off is at positive pressure. It should be anywhere between 5 PSI gauge to no more than 20. If it's higher than 20, we stand the chance of making our equipment not function properly. The other thing you'll get is a quick grab. When this is hooked up to the canister, the sample will instantaneously be pulled into the vacuum. And like I said, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll have this in their hands, they'll take this off, connect this to the canister, and you've now pulled in air, which now your O2 levels are going to be wrong. If you just click it on, let it sit for one or two seconds and take it off, if you fill the can up by about 20%, your numbers are going to be 20% wrong. With that being said, let's turn around and take a sample. So you get your canister, remove the cap. You will then take the gauge. You will hook the can to the gauge. Now the, the gauge will not pull in sample. It is only going to read the vacuum that is sitting in the canister. As you can see, this one had spun down to minus 30 inches of mercury. That tells us, or will tell you, that this can is fine to use. It is under complete vacuum and we don't have to worry about at this time of any results being biased. After that, remove the gauge from the canister. We are now ready to sample. Your quick grab that we send you has a female ending, which is used with a 9 16th uh, nut, uh, which is also quarter inch inside diameter. And if you do have the other type of ending, you can remove the end and put it onto the, to the larger, uh, to your female ending. Distance is the, uh, of your pipe is the most important 
part. If you're having lines that are like three and four feet long from your sampling source or your large pipe, it is it could cause uh, another bias in your in your results. So if this is my source and my gas, and my main pipe is coming in through here, I don't want to have a pipe here that may be three, four, five feet out because the actual source has to travel such a distance that we're going to have an issue. On this one you can see we have a female ending, on this one we have the male ending, and on the valves we have a male ending. Now for, for demonstration purposes I'm going to use the one that has the valve hooked onto it. And like we said before, make sure that you're going to bleed this line because as your gas is coming on through, it's always going to be at a pressure that you're going to have to bleed the line. So what we're going to do is before we start, we're going to open up the line and let the gas start to, to follow through. As it's coming out, you may want to uh, divert this to another area or make sure you have proper air ventilation going on so your room doesn't end up smelling. And you're going to close your valve. Now in this case, I have a very short tube ending on here from my source. I'm going to connect this. I'm going to take a 9 16th wrench and I'm going to tighten it down. Now I'm ready to sample. Since I've already gone to my, my uh, gauge, I already know I'm at minus 30 inches of mercury. I'm going to open up my valve. I'm going to pull back on the collar. I'm going to hook up and I'm going to start pulling in sample. Now, one way of checking to see, well, geez, did I connect enough sample to my system is I'm going to close the valve, disconnect the can from the regulator from the quick grab, reattach my gauge to it, and as you can see, this is still has not gotten to positive pressure or at zero. I'm still sitting at around minus 10 inches of mercury. There's insufficient sample in this canister for me to remove any sample once it gets to the laboratory because we need to do the fixed gases. What you're going to do is disconnect again and even though we're still under vacuum, we're going to reopen up our line. We're going to pull back on the collar and let it, let it collect. Now under normal circumstances, if you're at 5 PSI's or 10 PSI's gauge coming into the system, usually within 15 to 20 seconds, it should fill up. If it doesn't, you haven't failed on taking a correct sample, you just need to go back and, and pull another sample. When all's done, you're going to close your valve, disconnect, put your gauge on, and as you can see, we're now at around uh, zero. Uh, we're at ambient conditions. Uh, we could still pull a small amount of sample, but we really need to be at a at least a five psi. Once this is done, disconnect your gauge. Put the cap back on. Um, fill out all the paperwork and your labels that will be put onto your canister. Put it back into the box, and you're done. Now, some of you may lose the orange cap. It's not that big of a deal. However, you have to remember that because the crosshairs are on here, if it goes into the box, and as during shipping it starts bouncing around the box, these crosshairs are going to become uh, engaged, and you're going to start, because it's under positive pressure, push small amounts of gas sampling or uh, gas into the uh, box. Uh, it could bias your results, um, but for shipping purposes, it's going to make the, uh, the uh, shipping carrier a little bit upset because his truck or vehicle now smells of biogas. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Just ask for Russ at 315-431-431. Uh, 9730 and I'll be more than happy to work with you. Uh, in the next video what I will be showing you is how to sample with a Tedlar bag.